Acts 9, verse 5 and 6. Let's grab that real quick. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Did y'all catch that? <laughs> Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must. Can I say that again? Yeah. What thou must, yes, sir. Wow. must do. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. And I'd like to speak to you from the text, the conservative movement. All right. The conservative movement. Yeah. <laughs> And if I had a subtext to apply to this text, it would be, you're going to do what you're told. All right. Amen. You're going to do, we're going to do what we're told. Bow with me in prayer. Father God, we thank you for everything you're about to do in this house. God, we thank you right now that we hear chains falling off. God, we thank you right now that we hear the captives crying out that they're free. God, we thank you right now that the spirit of liberty has fallen fresh in this house. God, we thank you right now that everything that you said is starting to unfold in our very, before our very eyes. God, we thank you right now that everything that you said is coming to pass. And we thank you right now, God, that you have been with us every step of the way. God, we ask right now that you bless us right now with your presence. Speak to us and through us at the same time. God, we ask you right now that you say something in here today that will encourage us to carry on to see what the end may be. God, we ask that you say something in here today, God, that will allow us to be enlightened on everything that's going on in our life, God. God, we ask that you say something right now to let us know that our labor has not been in vain. Speak to us, God. Let us know right now, God, that you are with us and in us. And God, we ask you right now in the precious name of Jesus, whether we be here in the present or over the internet, God, that you just spend some time with us today. Because we want to have a talk with Jesus. Because we believe just a little talk with you will make everything all right. God, we ask right now that you bless us and keep us and speak to us right now, God. Break strongholds, God, and remove mountains. God, we ask that you bless us right now. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and welcome your Holy Spirit in the house and in our hearts. May the church say amen. 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 This text in Acts was put into my spirit before Tuesday of last week. Because the Lord reminded me that we don't serve presidents. But actually, it should be the reciprocal that presidents are elected to serve us. Yeah. He, he reminded me that administrations come and go. That's right. That's right. But the kingdom of God right. shall remain. Yeah. I, I decided that before the election results start tumbling down, and I preached to you last week that we're going to be all right. I, I decided before any of the numbers start ticking at the bottom of my screen that I was going to trust in God and trust in his process. Because I found out that I was born later than a lot of y'all in here. I haven't seen as many presidents as y'all because y'all know I'm only 29 years old. So... I need y'all to understand that I, I, I've only experienced a few presidents, but I realized, Deacon Kaiser, that no matter who was at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, as long as God was still in heaven, everything worked out for our good. 
I realized something. No matter who was standing in the Oval Office, as long as Jesus was on the throne, everything is going to be all right. I, I thank God that, that my daddy was able to feed no matter who was in the White House, no matter who was in the governor's house, no matter who was the mayor of Columbia, God made a way for his children. And I grabbed my text and I, I started reading that my Bible said all things work for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Can somebody trust in God and trust in his purpose that no matter what's going on in your life, you're going to say, for God I live and for God I'm going to live some more? I know we say for God I live and for God I die, but it's time for us to start realizing that God came that we might have life and life more abundantly. So I'm not counseling out his blessing of life by speaking death in my own situation. For God I live and for God I'm going to live again. See, I thank God that in our text today, we find out that there was a man by the name of Saul. And Saul had a lot of power. We learned in Samuel, if he can gamble, that Saul was attributed to being able to speak every language known at the time. He was from a place called Tarsus, where the seminary was. Matter of fact, if we had to equate to where Saul was from, it would be Harvard in these days or yeah. Oxford over in England. He was from a place where the educated folk, the high and mighty people came. And the Bible lets us know that Paul had the power that he can bind men. Yeah. Right. And he was a particular rascal. Mm -hmm. yeah. He could not only bind men, but they gave him the power to bind women too. Mm -hmm. See, back in those days, brothers, men had respect. We only dealt with men. A man held a man to an account. A man judged another man, and it was up to that man, once he was judged, to go back and correct his house, and that included his wife and his children. But Paul was a rascal. Paul didn't wait for you to get your wife in order or to get your house correct. Paul, when he came, he showed up for everybody. As my coach said, Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. And in our text today, Paul was on his way. Right after he stoned a good deacon. Remy Fan, they don't make deacons like him no more. <laughs> right after they had stoned a good deacon, yeah. he heard that they were gathering in Jesus' name. Uh -huh. And Paul went to the magistrate. Yes, yep. And he said, let me tell you something. I need a legal document. Uh -huh. He said, present me some papers that when I get down to Jerusalem, yeah. I can bind the men and the women that I can throw them in jail and they can't ask no questions. It's just time to go to jail. And the Bible says that the magistrate gave Paul the writ. See, Paul was from an organization known as the Pharisee. And the Pharisaical church, if you can, would be the conservative movement of now and days. See, all they believed in was the law and the application of the law. They believed that if a man stole a slice of bread, you chopped off his hand. They believed that if a man told a lie, you pulled out his tongue. They believed that if a man committed adultery, I don't tell you what they chopped off then, but they had these laws back then. Can we be real today? And all they cared about was the law and the gathering of the law. But I learned as a young man that the law without compassion is tyranny. I learned that the law without love is anarchy. I learned that anytime you're treating God's people wrong in the name of the law that he wrote in his blood, you will answer to God. Answer to God. See, the Pharisees wanted to run God's church like a business. Anything that didn't profit them was against God's business. They wanted to run the church like it was the law given business of them to judge each and every person whether they were right or they were wrong. They had what was called unchecked power. 
Somebody we know recently will have unchecked power well. in 2025. Can't nobody tell them that they're wrong as long as they're doing it in the right name or as long as they're doing it while they're on the job. They can do whatever they want to do and get away with it. At least they think they can. See, see, I found out that anybody that trusts in the law more than they trust in God cannot serve God. Anybody that believes in punishment more than forgiveness don't know God. And anybody that will kill their brother over any circumstance does not love God. Paul got him a writ. Because he was part of the conservative movement. They believed in gathering all the power for themselves. They believed in telling the people that I'm going to protect you whether you like it or not. Well, you heard that before. They believed in the policy that they can gather those and force them into encampments. Where have we heard that from? They believed in anybody that was not a Jew should be put out the country. Where have we heard that from? They believed that as anybody that did not praise God the way they praised God was useless. Where have we heard that from? They believed that anybody that sinned in a different way than they sinned. Can I say that again? Anybody that sinned in a different way than they sinned. Because ain't we all sinners, Reverend McFadden? But the difference between those and us, we're sinners under grace. But, but the leaders of the pharisaical movement, the conservative movement, they didn't repent. They never did. All they did was cast judgment. I heard somebody say that they didn't even have a reason to repent. Yet they were leading with the approval of some that thought that they were from God. The Bible says that Paul grabbed his writ. Because he was part of the conservative movement. Because he heard that there were people gathering down in Jerusalem. In the name of Jesus. And he decided that he was going to go down there. Because that was an unlawful assembly. And if he had a writ in his hand. Anybody that was gathering in that assembly. Could be immediately jailed and thrown in the stocks. But can I tell you right now that Paul was a part of the movement. But the people that was gathering had yet to take the name of Christians. They were known as the way. You've heard about the way before, ain't it? Jesus said I am the way, the truth, and the life. Ain't no man cometh unto the Father except so when they were gathering in the name of Jesus, can I tell you right now that God's way is bigger than any movement that comes? Can I tell you right now that God's way will be done? Can I tell you that the way of God is stronger than any president, any earthly king, any senator, any mayor, any congressman? See, Paul didn't realize that when he was going down there because of the movement, he was going to run into the way. <laughs> Ebenezer, can I tell you something today? Your enemy think they're coming for you. But I told you a story about an alarm on a car. Said when the crook came up to break her window, before he could break her window, a viper rose up on the inside and the crook ran away. Can I tell you right now, when your enemy comes to eat of your flesh, when your enemy comes to kill and steal and destroy, the Bible says that God will raise up a stand against him. Can I tell you right now, your enemy may come in one way, but your Bible say he will flee in a thousand ways. Can I tell you right now, anybody that comes up against you, they got to meet Jesus first. I feel my help showing up now. I ain't felt this in a long time. Hey! I feel like something's filling me up on the inside. I've been empty way too long. 
I've been without them way too long. I've been too busy complaining and too busy having a pity party. But thank you, Jesus. I, I feel you again. I, I feel my strength coming on. I tell you something. That you plus God is always the majority. Can I tell you something today? That they can have a whole army and all God need is one word. And armies will fall. Can I tell you something right now? They can have a whole constitution and all God need is one scripture. And he can tear that government all the way down. My Bible tells me that Paul had it down because he had a movement. And he was going to throw anybody that gathered in Jesus' name in jail. But before he could get to us, somebody say before he could get to us. Somebody say before he could get to us. On an old dirty road, a highway off the path called the Damascus Highway, he ran into Jesus. My Bible tells me that Paul was so sore, was so bad. That the men around him, when they described him, said him and his minions, his minions ran rode horses. But Paul was so bad that when the Bible describes said Paul sat upon a beast. That Paul was so bad, even his horse was bad. Y'all seen He-Man before, ain't it? He-Man, the only man I know that rode a battle cat. He man was the only man I know that was so bad that when he came into battle, he when his lion roared, everybody fell down. Paul was so bad that his horse was even mean. But he came down and he ran into Jesus. And the Bible says that he was flung from his horse to the ground. You know, that had to be shocking. Because, Brother McFadden, if you examine the text, the men he was with could hear stuff but couldn't see it. Oh, my. Can, can, can I, let me put some exegesis on that. <laughs> Somebody empowered and heard that they're doing you wrong, but they ain't seen how God going to correct it yet. Somebody been running with a crew thinking they Billy Bad. Yeah. But let me tell you about God. God always grabbed the loudest pup. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, see, see can, 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 can I add a little more context to it? Yeah. Go ahead. God knows that if he punches the bully in the nose, the minions will scatter. Well, All right. can, can I tell you this right now? Feel sorry for anybody that's trying to put you down. Feel sorry for anybody that's in the leadership against you. Feel Pray hard for anybody that's trying to take your resources. Pray hard for anybody that's trying to ruin your marriage. Because when God shows up, that's who he's looking for. They can't hide. They can take a back highway. And God will meet them right there. The Bible says, Paul fell from his horse. Hmm. His beast, and he heard a voice, yeah. called him by name. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't give him no. T you know what? I found out about arrogant people, Sister McFadden. Mm -hmm. You better leave their title off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. That's Doctor. That's Doctor Smith. <laughs> you know some people like that. You know some people well, that's Sergeant Myers. Well, yeah. Amen. Can, I, can I go to some educators in That's Assistant Principal Jackson. Well, you know some people like that, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. That's Attorney Gamble. <laughs> Messing with you, D. Amen. And, uh, well. well, let me tell you something about God. When God talked to you, right. he's going to cut straight to the quick. Yes. He's going to call you by what name your mama gave you when you were born. 
God don't care if you're the governor. He don't care if you're the senator. He don't care if you're the VP or the president. When God showed up, he said, Saul. Yes, he did. did. Saul, why does thou persecutest me? And then Saul, still trying to be arrogant if you read the text, answered God by telling God who he was. See, in the text it says that Jesus told Paul something that I don't think we grasp. He said, Paul, it is hard to kick against the prick. See, see, it's two annotations for the prick. The first is a physical prick because what happens is when people was plowing plowing the field, I ain't never plowed no field. See, bring me the corn after you done picked me. Yes, sir. I ain't never plowed no field. Bring me some jeans. I don't want the cotton. I ain't never plowed no field, Brother Walker. Bring me the peach pie. I ain't plucking no peaches. Can I be honest with you? I admire a farm. I saw one that day and I threw my hand up when I rolled by. Early this morning, he was out on his John Deere track, the coal, sitting with a cup of coffee on his track. That ain't Troy. I'm in the house. I'm around a warm bowl of grits or oatmeal. How long daddy going to be out there? But the prick was used against a bullock, and a bullock was a particular breed of bull that was strong but ornery. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell it down. And, and a prick was used that when you wanted the bull to go left, you had to stab him in his hindquarters on his right side because whatever side you stabbed him on, he would move to the opposite side. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what the prick, the farmer would use when he was plowing the field, that if he wanted the bull to go left, he would stab him in the right bullet. And if he wanted the bull to go right, he would stab him in the left one. And, and, and often the bull would get mad. And when the bull got mad, he would wrap back yeah. and stab himself deeper. Mm-hmm. Any farmers in the house know I'm telling the truth? And Jesus told Paul, he said, and the second annotation of that was that when you kick against the pricks, you are going against something that you know is right just to be going against it. So when Paul answered Jesus and said, Lord, he knew who was talking to him. He knew nobody was brave enough to just say so. He knew nobody knew who he was in Damascus. He knew that nobody could come against him because he was rid of his minions. But when Jesus called Saul's name, he realized that the movement had gone the wrong way. That he had kicked against something that he could not break. And Jesus said, you done kicked against the pricks one time too many. He said, let me tell you something. After Jesus spoke to Paul Saul, the Bible says that with trembling and astonishment, he said to the Lord, what will you have me to do? I came to tell somebody today that no matter what happens in 2025, somebody's going to bow down to Jesus. No matter what happens in 2025, somebody's going to answer to the Lord. No matter what happens in 2025, you're going to be all right because God is controlling the bullet. God is controlling the animal. God is controlling the thing that tried to come against you. I need somebody in here to know that God is in control. They're just plowing the field. But the field belongs to the farmer, and God is the farmer. Oh my. He said, This is where I get happy. I'm already happy, let me tell you that. I, I done got high off my own supply. Oh my. Oh my. He said, What should I do? And Jesus said to him, You got to do three things. I came to tell somebody this today mm-hmm. that in 2025, mm-hmm. everything that's been coming against you, trying to hurt you, is going to have to do three things because Jesus said so. They're going to have to do three things. Somebody say three things. Three things. After Paul humbled himself and realized who he was dealing with, mm-hmm. the Bible says, that Jesus told him, first thing you gotta do is get up. Yes, sir. Can I tell you right now? Yes, sir. Everything that's bothering you, you gotta get up off you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
You better celebrate like God is lifting your troubles. That means that debt got to rise up off you. That means that depression got to rise up off you. That means that sickness has got to rise up off you. The first thing is got to get up. The second thing is got to go. God said, get up and go. And let me tell you about God. He don't just say go. You see, my grandmama taught me, she said, we tell Satan to be behind me. But that might mean Satan just get right behind you and put his nose on your back. Uh-huh. Lily Bell said, no, baby, tell the devil to get up under your foot and tell him which foot you want him under. Right. The Bible says, is this all right? Jesus told Paul, first you got to get up. And then he said, you got to go. You was going to that city anyway, but go the way I'm sending you now. Your enemy is going to come to you, but they're going to come to you the way God has sent them to you. Can I tell you, when God finished with your enemy, they're going to look like a kitten with no claws. When God get a hold of your enemy, God going to do something to your enemy that's going to make your enemy so thankful that you had mercy on them. When God gets finished speaking to your enemy, God's going to do something to your enemy that's going to make your enemy realize that I should have never put my mouth on you. I should have never tried to come against you because you were part of the way and all I had was a movement. Can I tell you right now, somebody need to tell Donald Trump, bowels have movement. Y'all will catch that on the ride home. When I'm eating my strawberry frosty today, y'all will catch that. First thing, it's got to get up off you. The second thing, it's got to go and go where God tells it to go. Mm-hmm. See, we often tell people to go to the bathroom. And I would say, but some of y'all are super religious and y'all think I was cussing, so I ain't going to tell y'all <laughs> where y'all say y'all tell people to go, right? All right. See, I know that laughter. That means y'all done told people to go there before. <laughs> now, told on yourself. Can I be honest with you? Yes, sir. I used to add a little inflection to it, Mama. I didn't just tell them to go. I used to tell them to go straight there. Don't even take no breaks. <laughs> don't take no breaks. Mm. It's all right. Anybody ever play Monopoly and say go straight to jail? Do not yeah. pass. Do not collect $200. I used to tell them, Brother Walker, go straight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get there as expeditiously as you can. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can I tell you right now, flesh can't go there. All right. Only spirit can. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're talking to your enemy, you need to give him a physical destination to go. And, and, and I, I want you to be invited to tell them, just get out of my face. Yeah. Go back to where you came from. Yeah. Yeah. Can you go back to your house and leave mine alone? All right. yeah, everybody got somebody to come to your house and visit way too long and run their mouth way too long. You don't try going to put your pajamas on and they're waiting on you when you come out. All right. You done cut every light off of the room they in. <laughs> done put the time on the TV twice and they done went down and they still yeah. sitting there. Because you won't tell them when to go and where to go to. Let me tell you, I had a church member at my first church. And I used to love being the last one to leave the church. And Sister Mary, God bless her, she would do the thing my mama did, and I couldn't stand it. She would mix bleach and pine saw together. Have you in there like you're in a gas chamber. <laughs> <laughs> and every Sunday when she was ready to mop her flow, she would kiss me on my forehead. She said, Pastor, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get out of here. Because <laughs> she was ready to mop her flow. And one thing about Sister Mary, you was not going to walk on her wet flow. Mm-hmm. She mopped her way out of that church, and the last footprint was hers that she mopped up. And I realized this if you don't want somebody in your space, invite them out of your space. If you got work to do, why are you letting somebody hold up the work God has assigned you to do? Tell them you got to go. 
You got somewhere to be, but that ain't right here and right now. So the first thing they got to do is get up off you. The second thing they got to do is they got to go. And the third thing is the most important thing that's going to bless us in 2025. They got to do what God tells them to do. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. They got to go there and they got to wait until God tells them what to do. See, that's why I feel sorry for the conservative movement. Because they don't realize this. God is going to stagnate them until they do what he tells them to do when he tells them to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You can have all the power on this side. But if you don't have none of his power, you cannot do anything. So church, I'm going to leave you with this today. Tomorrow when you get to work, that person that aggravates you, invite them to get up. Invite them to go back to their desk and let them know right now, just do what you've been told. Because if you don't do those three things, blessings will not come your way. Let your enemy know if he doesn't do those three things, he will never be delivered from the blindness in his life. Your enemy is blind and don't even know. He's been hearing from his friends, and he can hear a voice, but he cannot see where it's coming from. Wouldn't that be crazy to hear a voice know it's there but can't trace it back to his root but I'm glad when I hear the voice of God I know to look towards the hills from which cometh my help cause all my help comes from the Lord